Alright, what is up YouTube? This is Space Captain again with another battle report of Warhammer Age of Sigmar. Today we got match play, 2,000 points of Skaven vs. the Undead. Alright, this is the fourth game of a narrative campaign that I'm playing against one of my good buddies. We decided to take the campaign from first Monster's Lair scenario to the Raise the Monolith scenario to a 1500 point battle and now we have a 2000 point glimpse of the undying King Nagash. Alright y'all, let's get started. Immediately after their narrow escape, the seer Yitzkray began conversing with his hired assassin. Where were you? he squeaked. What am I paying you for? Ungrateful leader, you are alive, aren't you? Focus your energy on what lies ahead. That would serve you better. The assassin seemed to contemplate slashing his ungrateful throat. While the ritual is still on, I cannot truly die. Your thinking ruined my plan. Must I explain every detail to have compliance? The great horned one has blessed me for my gift to him. The assassin replied, Then surely you can rely on his unwavering guidance to find your way back to your den. The assassin then vanished into the darkness of the cave. The masters of Eshin have trained this one well. Yitzkray, dazed by the lack of caring to his orders, shouted empty threats and curses into the darkness. After collecting himself, Yitzkray spat it onto the earth. Well, if he thinks he's getting the other half of that payment, he's delusion. Before the seer could finish his word, out of the darkness whistled a warp star, bearing itself one inch eye level from the seer's face. Once again, he had to pause and bite his tongue before he had his third strike. Shambling through the dark tunnels, the seer eventually found his way. Upon arrival, filthy and blood-soaked, his servants ran to greet and, and apply aid to the seer. Do not waste time, he barked. Great, great plan is still not lost. As he raised both paws into the air, streaks of green lightning shot throughout the dark tunnels. An uproar of shrieks, squeals, and roars echoed throughout the tunnel. All those inside had erupted into a death frenzy and marched forward under a powerful spell cast by the seer. Great, great mysteries of death we will learn, the seer screeched his gnarled brethren foaming at the mouth and bloodlust around him, seeking death or victory. Nagash, forming into his final form with every moment, his specter began to raise in power. All right, y'all, that was the end of the lore. Uh, right now we have a shot of the board um, overhead. So here we have Nagash with 30 zombies and his uh, champion, RK on the black. Also, we have my battle line where it's a Vermin Lord Corruptor, 20 Plague Monks, a battle line of five Plague Sensor Bearers, and two units of 10 Clan Rats, two units of three Gisales, two Poison Wind Mortars, 10 Acolytes, a Warlord, and 30 Storm Vermin. So, here we have an overview of the battle before turn start. And battle start turn one. So he winds up actually getting the first turn. So he starts casting a bunch of raised spells. He gets his Mor Morgost Archai uh, to join the party a little bit. He's got all these archers to, uh, you know, try and rain down some hell on me. A uh, unit of six Vargais a unit of 10 Grave Guard, and a unit of 10 Wolves. So right now, he filled out his line very quickly, and they begin to move forward. So, on my turn, I begin to move forward. I wind up charging into his uh, Wolves with my Plague Monks. I was really hoping to get my Help hit a little bit closer, but I only rolled, rolled a 3 on my movement. So, that kind of sucks. A little bit out of range, and then also, unfortunately, my Vermin Lord was one inch away from being able to use his Plague spell. Ugh, that's such a bummer. So, I put a bunch of buffs on the Plague Monks. I give them plus two attacks because of the Warlord and the Corruptor ability used in conjunction. Also, they charged and do two attacks apiece already. So right now, each individual Plague Monk is going to be doing five attacks, re-rolling ones 
wounding on fours, hitting on fours, and uh, yeah, yeah. So that's that's pretty intense, and that's what I'm trying to roll with. Uh, we have the combat. I used my Book of Woe at the beginning of the, the battle, and unfortunately I was only able to do one wound to the wolves, but I'll try to make it work. Uh, we wind up going into the combat with the Plague Monks and the Wolves, and the of course the Plague Sensor Bearers as well. And with all of that, uh, they wind up killing about six wolves. And um, unfortunately for the rest of the game, I wound up forgetting about the Plague Sensor ability, which is kind of like the whole reason why you take them, uh, to do the one mortal wound for enemies within three inches. Eh, but whatever. So, that is the end of turn one, for the most part. Another close-up and an overview of the table. So, we go ahead and roll off for turn two, and I get the second turn. The double turn. Oh, my goodness. So, here we have an overview of what the end of turn one is, before I turn the dice over, of course. Uh, this is before the, the charge. Um, so, this is a little duplicate. But, on my turn, I move from here. I'm able to actually buff up my clan rats uh, doing the same thing where I give them plus two attacks so my unit of ten clan rats in the very very center is going to wind up doing 31 damage it, or 31 attacks if they wind up actually hitting uh, in full like if they're all in range so that's pretty cool so my plan at this point is to work with the help hit and the you know ten clan rats hopefully I can get that buff on them and make it all you know really worthwhile so I go ahead and move, and as you can see, there's only one clan rat left. But if you do remember, there were 50 zombies. So let's break it down what happened. I go ahead and charge in my clan rats and my help hit, uh, and also I'm in combat with my plague sensor bears and my plague monks to the right. What I wind up doing is I wind up attacking with, well, activating the clan rats first. So they wind up doing 31 attacks, and they probably wounded with like 12, so they probably killed like 12 zombies, which is decent, especially for clan rats. Um, you know, if you think about it, it was basically a unit of 30, but in a unit of 10, so sure. Uh, and then he winds up attacking back with his zombies, and they wind up killing, I think, 7? And then because of the battle shock, that's why I have one clan rat left. Wow, that was pretty intense. Uh, so he's right there, kind of in the middle, uh, able to you know, kind of shake things up a little bit because he's not entirely dead. The hell pit winds up attacking and he winds up killing off like 20 zombies. That was intense. But considering that I didn't wipe out the whole unit, he's going to be bringing a lot of those guys back. So right there is uh, basically just the damage from it. As you can see, in the top left over around all of my uh, artillery, I wind up spreading that other unit of 10 clan rats and just kind of a screen. So I'm using them for a three inch bubble uh, around so that I can prevent basically different people from maneuvering in and uh, just a little bit more defense for my uh, artillery because, you know, they can't make that charge unless they pass through my clan rats. So, you know, something to think about. So I got those ten acolytes that have been untouched. I have full units of everything. Uh, aside from basically the clan rats and the plague monks, and I'm thinking I'm doing pretty damn good. But this is the end of my turn. Uh, I wind up being one shy from killing the rest of those wolves, and I was really hoping that I could get rid of the wolves and then focus on the grave guard. But right now I'm kind of in a tight spot because now I have to make a decision uh, of. You know, do I support my Plague Monks, or do I just let them die on that side and keep driving through the center? Very, very important. So, here we have, it says roll off for turn three, but I actually messed up, and this is still the bottom of turn two on his turn. Even though it's going to say three through most of, you know, of course his turn, but uh, it's, it's still turn two until eventually you see on the dice that it's turn three. After killing a bunch of the, the Plague Globadiers, he moves in his Vargeis, uh, winds up casting a couple spells, killing off all of the clan rats, and his archers wind up uh, killing off one of the Gisales. So this got a little condensed pretty quickly. His Graveguard up at the top right, 
and also after bumping up his uh, zombies another 20, uh, <laughs> you know, the center filled out a lot, a lot more quickly. So, uh, after all of the combat, uh, basically, th this is still turn two, even though it says three at the bottom. Kind of goofed a little bit, but I'm going to talk you through this. So, he, he attacks first with his zombies, because he's trying to get rid of that one clan rat, and then also do as many wounds as he possibly can towards the hell pit. Whereas, you know, also if he were to lose the zombies, then that would be less attacks he could make less buffs, things like that. So he went ahead and attacked with them first, uh, winds up actually not killing that clan rat, and then only doing three wounds to my hell pit, which is pretty crazy because I was not expecting that at all. Uh, the, um, the grave guard wind up killing, I think, like four plague monks. Uh, they, they actually didn't roll terribly well, but uh, I wind up killing off, I think two of the grave guard and I don't wind up killing the wolf so the wolf kills like one and then it uh, does like a mortal wound to the, the wolf because of my um, pestilence ability where if I die on a six I'm able to do a mortal wound so wolf one left down to one wound and then a unit of I guess seven grave, grave guard now against probably ten plague monks and I think at this point in time it would be four of the sensor bears. So that's that's all over there to the top right. But the main focus that I wanted to talk about, where these acolytes are, since he went through from the zombies to the graveguard to the wolves, I thought he was trying to just kind of, you know, bait me into bait me into a combat with the Morgost Archive, so I'm kinda thinking, you know, like he mentioned that they get to ignore all, all rend, and, you know, for some reason I thought he meant ignore all wounds on a 5-up. So I was just kind of like, oh no, I don't think I'm going to charge into them. So I charge in my acolytes, and I do a bunch of stabs, but, of course, I don't do any wounds, and he completely wipes them out with the Morgost Archai. But after, uh, I go through and I see, basically, the way that the Morgost Archai defend themselves. I was like, wait a minute. I just literally let my guys die when I could have charged my storm vermin in and done anything else. So, you know, say la vie. So I do that, I charge in my storm vermin, they wind up wiping out the Morgost Archai completely, uh, and then we move on to actually turn three. So, uh, I think I lied, uh, the undead don't get the first turn on this. Um, the... I wind up getting the other first turn, uh, so I wind up rolling, I'm able to uh, regain all of my wounds for the hell pit. As you can see, all of my plague monks are dead now, and I only have four of the plague sensor bears, and right now I kind of have to make a decision. Uh, am I going to pile in my storm vermin and try to go up through the middle to Nagash, or am I going to push to the left and try to save my uh, ranged? And, um, sure enough, I am thinking, wow, like, these guys, you know, they're, they're able to kill, like, six zombies because it's, like, a huge mass and everything like that, so I'm thinking, man, I really gotta rely on this artillery, and I'm just gonna keep the storm vermin around because they're so punchy that, you know, maybe they'll be able to kill whatever he has trying to kill my things. <laughs> that was a mouthful. So, Wind up going over here, a little overview of the combat before the combat. Um, also, this is a side view. And I wind up making a charge with my vermin lord. I wind up making the charge with my storm vermin. But I do not wind up making the charge with my warlord. Oh my god. So the thing about this scenario is that we decided, okay... Let's just have kill the general. Uh, you know, if I kill Nagash, I win. If you kill my warlord, you win. So he has this thing where it's called Hand of Dust. And I was very aware of it before this. I mean, that, that was something that a lot of my plan was. That was why my warlord was in the very center of the storm vermin, rather than spread out a little bit, casting things uh, onto everyone else, even though he's still kind of able to do that, but a few different reasons. 
But my guy is in a six inch bubble, a no fly zone. And I'm like, okay, cool. Well, at least I do have that six inch bubble. Uh, he's not going to be able to actually get in to charge me unless it's a you know six to seven inch charge. Uh, so that's cool, and I'm gonna just kind of work with that, even though I failed my charge. Uh, I also didn't move him before I tried to charge, so I could have. Oh my god! Like I could have even had him closer to the storm vermin. I I could have made a charge with him, and I just I don't know why I just accepted it, but I just friggin' accepted it. And, um, yeah, so I forgot to move with him and failed the charge. And here we have the combat. The Storm Vermin uh, wound up getting the buff from, of course, the, the two attack things. So my Warlord giving them all plus one to their attack profile. And then the Corruptor also giving them plus one to, to their attack profile. So each one of these Storm Vermin initially making two attacks are actually going to be making four attacks. Four attacks. Uh, and since they have more... They're going to get a plus one to wound. Uh, they're going to be wounding on threes. And yeah, I'm like, let's do this. So I get in, and because of the awkward shape of everything, um, I was trying to get like at least 20 guys or more into combat. But, you know, and also I was thinking, you know, since I do have Storm Vermin who are within range of the Vargeist, maybe I could attack them too. But I don't know why. I just decided to keep it simple. And with my pile in, uh, I didn't actually pile anyone in. I just left them there and did the nice thing of, uh, you know, let's just let's just have my unit only attack one guy, and then we'll kind of figure it out from there. Whereas I probably should have gotten 20 attacks onto the Vargeis, and, you know, uh, I wound up, I think, getting... 54 attacks onto the, or 51 attacks onto the um, hero right there. So it was just absolutely ridiculous. Again, just kind of selling myself short for whatever reason. I don't know why. Um, but, you know, as Skaven, uh, you have so many things working against you that you really have to fight for every single bit of good that you could possibly do. Because Skaven... You know, like, they're really, really hard to play as. Uh, they're really hard to play as. Just gonna say. So, they wind up actually killing off the hero in one go, but also this is one go for my strongest unit, buffed up to the highest amount that they could possibly be buffed up to, and then also, best case scenario, where I get off a charge and attack first. So, sure. They wound up doing it, but that was literally, this is the absolute zenith of what Skaven can do in close combat. Like, you got Storm Vermin, you got Plague Monks, and then you have a Hell Pit. Everyone else is not very good. So you gotta rely on a bunch of other things and distractions so that your Storm Vermin can actually gut up and swing at somebody. And, uh, you know... That's just what happened, but uh, I wound up not attacking the Vargeist at all, like a big old dummy, and I also forgot to activate my Assassin. Uh, if you remember last game, I failed to activate my Assassin also, and I was just like, okay, well, how about this? Uh, I'm just going to activate my Assassin, and he's going to attack the Vargeist. So, sure enough, that's what happens. Uh, he winds up doing... He winds up killing one of the Vargeist, which is pretty cool, and uh, then... We wind up going over to uh, the right, uh, the Hell Pit and the Vermin Lord Corruptor in conjunction wind up wiping out almost the entire unit of zombies. It gets down to one zombie left, and he's not dead. One zombie left. One zombie left. Oh my god. So my Warlord is right there in the center. Uh, he's got his nice little six inch bubble. I'm trying to make it so he can't hand of dust me. And, uh, yeah, so his Graveguard kill off the rest of the Plague Sensor Bearers, and, you know, I'm thinking, alright, so on his turn, he's going to get caught up with all these Storm Vermin, then my Storm Vermin can push over, kill all of his ranged units, and then basically it's just going to be my artillery firing at Nagash until he winds up dying, and if, 
you know, if he doesn't kill my hell pit or my verm vermin lord in the process, then they're going to be just hounding him. So it's looking really, really good for me right now. Like, it's looking really good for me. So, not turn four, the bottom of turn three. Uh, so, his turn. Uh, that is one, two, three, four, five, six storm vermin that wound up getting killed, which is actually pretty cool. And then I think I wind up only losing, like, one more from Battleshock, or, like, I don't think I... Yeah, 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 yeah. So I wound up losing, like... Okay, I wound up losing three, and then I lost an additional three because of Battleshock. That's what happened. So, we have his turn, and he just moves over and hand of dust me. Uh... Oh, man. So, basically... Because right here, you can see where I am. I'm on that uh, two-inch mark. Also, throughout the whole game, his cats were, like, running through and knocking things over. Whatever. But uh, there was a six-inch bubble in which he could cast or, like, get in. And I was prepared for that. I was actually thinking, okay, cool, he's going to move to that spot, and then he's not going to be able to hand dust me. And sure... Basically, he just moved there, and he was like, uh, alright, pick a hand. I'm like, what? He's just like, alright, pick a hand. So I'm like, alright, whatever, this is, uh, this is it, it's a 50-50 shot. If he doesn't kill my warlord on this, then, N you know, Nagash is more than likely going to die this turn. So this is really all or nothing for him, and sure enough, uh, <laughs> I'm like, okay, so the dice is in your right hand, and he kind of looks at me like, uh, and then I'm like, and in your left hand, there's nothing. And he's like, what? And he like looks at his wife, and then she's just, she's cooking dinner, so it's just like, she's like, I don't, I have no idea what you guys are even talking about. But he looked shocked, so I knew I was correct, and I don't know why, but I felt it, and I was like, all right, yeah, I'm going to choose your left hand. And then he kind of looked puzzled and was just like reaching out his hand and just opened it up and there was nothing in his left hand. And I started cheering, I'm like, yeah! And he's like, why Why are you cheering? And I'm like, well, because that was what was supposed to happen. He's like, no, you're supposed to choose the hand with the dice in it. Like, why? What, what kind of game is it where you choose the empty hand? I'm like, fuck. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> so, say la vie, even though I knew somehow that uh, the dice was in his right hand, um, I just wound up making the wrong decision and wound up getting him turned to dust. So, a little bit of the lore. Uh, he has, or Yitzkray has a protective spell over top of him that was enacted by the blood ritual. And what wound up happening is Nagash comes over here and he's like, uh, so you wish to learn more of death. And Yitzkray, you know, doesn't answer. He's just waiting to attack. And uh, Nagash is like, I will grace you with the presence of your gods. And in time, you will learn the mysteries of death. Raising up his right hand, eyes glowing, Yitzkray began to retch in pain and blew away into dust. All of his clansmen around him, including the Vermin Lord Corrupter and the Hell Pit, see that happen. And, uh, of course, since Yitzkray is the blood ritual owner who is able to summon the Corrupter while it's in, uh, the Corrupter vanishes, uh, the Hell Pit winds up just running away because he saw all this, like, crazy shit, and then the Storm Vermin also wind up running away back to their hole, uh, while everybody feasts on my artillery. So, my guard make it back, and that's about it. Uh, the hell pit runs away into basically just the wild, uh, and everyone else dies except for the storm vermin. So, here we have, after all of that, you can see Nagash had 11 wounds, but a turn 3 victory... So, for the Skaven, MVP is the Hell Pit, just a monster. Haha. <laughs> the Vermin Lord Corrupter, uh, those buffs, the fact that he can cast magic. Um, I never got Plague Off once. 
But oh my god, if I would have gotten it off on that unit of zombies. Oh man, roll 50 dice, and then however many sixes you get, those are dead zombies. Mm. Mm, 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 mm. But that never happened, so whatever. Uh, the Storm Vermin, wow, they are just so freaking tough. Uh, with the um, plus one to uh, their armor save from ranged attacks, to the fact that they already just make two attacks, to the fact that they are just better if they have more than the enemy. So Skaven, I love it. I've always loved the Storm Vermin, and when I played 8th edition, I felt like they were extremely lackluster, unless you brought, you know, a bunch of Storm Vermin with a uh, screaming bell in the center of it, and you have like 60 Storm Vermin. You know, like, other than that, they're probably just going to wind up dying in droves. But in this, they're very viable. They're very fast. They're definitely shock troops on foot. Uh, but also the most heavily armored troops that Skaven could possibly get. So, um, you know, for the most elite warriors that the Skaven could possibly field, they definitely reflect that, uh, especially if you compare them to, you know, a unit of 10 clan rats. <laughs> All right, and then MVP for Nagash's team. Of course it's Nagash. Uh, that guy is just so dirty. He's got all these, all these abilities. He can cast, like, five or six spells a turn. He gets the plus four to cast, and then uh, if the the Morgost Archai are within a certain range, he winds up getting plus five to cast. Wow. Zombies. You know, they're the cheapest unit that he could possibly field, but if he's able to just get them up, they're, they're so crazy. Definition of a tar pit. And then Vargeis. Uh... The essence of flying caval cavalry. Um, these guys are just flying ogres. They're terrifying, and they can hit you from so many different angles if you're not ready for it. So definitely, uh, anytime he runs a list, he better bring some vargeists because <laughs> they're they're pretty intense. Mobile, strong, defensive. Yes. All right, and that is the end of the battle report. Uh, we're going to have another one coming up in about a week, but uh, for all for now, that is all. Uh, go ahead and like, comment, subscribe below if there's anything we can try differently, or if uh, you would like to see from us, either more or less of. <laughs> you know, uh, just talking about as far as the production side of this. Uh, we're very, very interested in, you know, making this more entertaining for everyone. Um, sure, the lore is cool and all, and also you get to see some decent shots, but... um. You know, we're really trying to take this to the next level. So that'd be nice if we could get some feedback for that. And uh, until next time, thanks again, y'all. Keep on wargaming.